Call the meeting of the Finance Committee to order. The Cindy requests a roll call. Mr. Westmoreland? Present. Mr. Duncan? Here. Ms. Dominguez? Present. Ms. Abrams? Here. Good afternoon. Subsection A, review the accounts payable check register from February 16, 2021 to March 15, 2021 in the amount of $14,619,376.49. Good afternoon, Mr. Schnadelbach. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, the Chairman of the Committee. Um, it's just for information purposes only presented to the um, Finance Committee. I'll entertain any questions on any items if there are any that y'all have. Don't appear to be any. We'll move on to subsection B, review the year-to-date actual budget comparison report for the month of February 2021. If you recall, at the last Finance Committee meeting, we uh, approved revised budget numbers. They're incorporated in this report. At this particular time, we're projecting our year-end numbers to be right on our revised budget figures. So no variances at this time. For both major funds, that would be the general fund and the capital project fund. Okay. Anybody have any questions? I'll make a motion to accept. There's not. I don't think there's. Oh, we don't need a motion. Yeah, we don't, right. yeah, we don't need a motion. So. We'll move on to subsection C, consider approval of the contract with Strategic Demographics LLC to provide reapportionment and redistricting services, Mr. Snodelbach. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's that time again where the census information is coming in to us in the next couple of months and we have to reapportion our uh, voting districts for our board members accordingly. We have Mr. Danny Garrett in the office, uh, in the audience. I'd like to bring him to the podium and he can give you a brief uh, explanation of what services his company will provide and entertain any questions y'all may have. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, I'm Danny Garrett. A uh, number of you know me particularly because we did this 10 years ago. Um, I contracted with a company called Redistricting LLC that time. I worked with uh, Dr. Bill Blair. Uh, Dr. Blair actually owns Strategic Demographics LLC. We just started getting calls, so it's just a different company name, same services. Um, there's a couple of different things different. For those of you who hadn't done it before, we will be receiving the census numbers. Everything's been delayed a bit this time, unfortunately. Normally, we would almost have, we would have the census numbers by now. They're going to be delivered to the president by April 1st but then we will get to the state will actually receive the numbers sometime later. Uh, we're hopeful that it's not as late as they have indicated, which is September. But that's, that would still give us enough time um, to get the districting done and in place before your regularly scheduled elections in 22. Uh, one note, for those of you who did it last time, you were, we, all districts in Louisiana were required to be pre-cleared by the Justice Department. So after we drew the plans, we had to submit them to justice. And Dr. Blair and I worked on 32 different jurisdictions from actually from the town of Amy, Amy City to uh, the city of New Orleans and a number of school boards and parish governments around the state. And of those 32 plans, every one of them was pre-cleared. And that's essentially a commitment we made. We're not going to advise you on a plan that does not meet the parameters of the Voting Rights Act and the Constitution. Uh, the whole point of this is that your districts, your election districts are supposed to be approximately equal in population based on census numbers. So that one person's vote for Mr. Duncan counts the same as somebody else's vote for Ms. Simmons. And so we try to get that as close as we can. There is a, there is a judicially recognized margin of error of about plus or minus five, five percent off of that ideal population. But that's what we're going to use. And we're bound by those census numbers. Technically, the law actually allows a school board to go do their own census. I don't know anybody that's done it because it's immensely expensive and takes a long time. Uh, so when we get the numbers, we'll do it. Now, and the reason I bring up that is the Supreme Court ruled in 2013 in a case called Shelby County versus Holder that the list of jurisdictions in the Voting Rights Act that are required to do preclearance was arbitrarily drawn by Congress. They had not given any thought to who should be on the list. In fact, what Congress did is just keep the same people on the list who had been put on the list 25 years before that. And so right now, there is no redistricting requirement. Now, there is a bill going through Congress that could end up putting a redistricting uh, com requirement back on jurisdictions in Louisiana. We've accounted for that in our contract. Um, our contract is a little less than it would have been 
because there is no requirement for, re for submission to justice because that is a significant amount of work. There is a clause in the contract, though, that would pay us if we would have to do that for you. But there's no reason for you to pay us for something that we don't maybe don't have to do. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at. Um, like I said, I I'm very proud of the fact that we did very diverse, very large, very small jurisdictions all around the state and got every one of them pretty clear by justice. Um, because frankly, if you don't get it, that's why you hire a consultant to help. And uh, if they lead you down a bad path, that's, that's, you're not, you're, you haven't gotten your money's worth. So I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, that anybody has. No questions, but would move to adopt the administration's recommendation. Have a motion to hear a second. Second. <clears throat> uh, Ms. Rose, have any discussion? The only thing I'd ask is that before Ms. Abrams signs this contract, yeah. that it be uh, corrected to already reflect fixed. that she's the president of the Tangipahoa Parish. School Ms. Board. Jenkins already fixed that. <laughs> it was See, I, good thing is I'm, I'm not a very good typist, <laughs> but I'm a pretty good redistrict consultant. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Call for a vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. I didn't vote. It didn't come up. You're not on the committee. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a good thing I didn't vote. She knows my mom, so she feels like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I did that. You can vote when we approve the minutes. <laughs> Moving on to section D, consider approval to renew the flood insurance for 21-22, Mr. Schnallbach. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the administration is recommending to renew with the expiring uh, policy. There is an increase of $945 or just under 6%. But uh, these flood policies are required by FEMA for, in order to be eligible for FEMA reimbursements for future uh, flood damage. So it's administration recommendation to renew this policy. Do I hear a motion? Move to it, Doc. Uh, second. Motion by Mr. Duncan, second by Ms. Dominguez. Any discussion? So all, you're picking a column though, right? Or no, all of these columns? Column four is okay, the I'll one we're recommending, yes okay. ma'am. The previous columns are previous years. Okay, I was trying to figure out yeah. why. You, yeah. It yeah. shows how much it goes oh, okay. up every year. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Call for a vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Section E, consider approval awarding bid 2021-1 janitorial supplies to the item winning bidder. Mr. Tashvich. Yes, thank you. Uh, we recommend awarding the uh, items to the uh, vendors and the items winning bidder column at the lowest price and not the specs. Do I hear a motion to I'll make, I'll make a motion to accept. Second. Have any discussion? Call for a vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Section F, consider approval of the low bid for bid 20. 21-2 water source PTACs from Scully and Strawn for the amount of $68,510. Yes, thank you. That is the recommendation to Scully and Strawn. A little bit that met the specs. Question. Question. Go ahead. Mr. Tess, what is, what is this and where is this going? We didn't really get much information about. Right there. You know, <laughs> they're going to go in inventory and be available for them. We need it to fit. The pot's too high, I know it has a lot. And so we're getting five to keep an in inventory so that we have them on hand. These are water source um, heat pumps that uh, operate a little different than the air to air heat pumps that we have. Our schools that have water source, our uh, HVAC contractor 
will be able to take it out of inventory from us. It will, we're able to buy it at a cheaper price, save the markup, and uh, install the unit. Um, this would serve the uh, Ponchula High School and other schools that have water source heat pumps that we're utilizing in our classes. So is the idea to just have them on inventory so that we don't have to pay a premium for them when something goes out or is, is that in that when we place one in we're going to reorder a new one so they'll, they'll, we'll be reordering as we order it now we're we're ordering and we're paying higher costs for the units but as as we have a need there'll be an inventory we'll be able to pull them out and then get to a reorder point and order some more as they go right I mean, that's what I was, so like right now the practice is when something like this goes out we have to hurry up and order one and we pay more than what we're paying here we pay plus we pay the markup on the eight fat contractor yeah. yeah you pay the contractor for we it pay the contractor price here we're going to uh, purchase it in-house and we'll buy it net of sales tax we'll also buy it at a competitive price so we should have a significant savings okay <clears throat> mr snowball uh, one question are yes, these sir. units when they have to be replaced are they, yeah, this is only are they when installed the by, by by school board well, personnel only when the unit can't be repaired. Okay. So, you know, it, what's happening is the units at, the, at Ponchula High School, we're not able to get the parts anymore for it. A lot of them, the, um, um, the compressors are no longer being made that fit the units. Okay, uh, yeah, but my question was, is it school board, school board maintenance personnel that actually swaps these units out? Sometimes it could be. Sometimes it could be our HVAC contractor that we have. Either way. Let's see. Do I hear a motion to adopt? I make a motion to accept. Motion by Ms. Rose. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Duncan. Call for vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. I just had one question about, we've already voted on it, but uh, Mr. Tuskovich, the, the bids for the janitorial surprise, they're all out of state or, or out of the, we don't have anybody locally that ever normally bids for this? Well, economically is the closest one and they're, they're in New Orleans. Yeah, I know we've used them a lot, but I was right. just surprised how, you know, everybody's so far away. I know, they, we, we're not getting the bids, and we put this, these bids on Facebook and on our website and on the internet, and we've emailed the vendors. And so, I guess in the past, some of them have bid, but they haven't been competitive mm -hmm. with economicals. So I guess they they give give up. Maybe so. <laughs> it is surprising to see Home Depot competing. Yeah, I saw that. Time we have Home Depot. So. Right. They see some savings. Mm -hmm. okay. That's all that will come before the Finance Committee. It is adjourned. <laughs>